Hey Fingsters, today we will be learning how to find the index of a list element in Python. Now this is a very basic topic that I am going to cover. However, you must remember that these are the fundamentals that will help you in the long run. And as all of us know that list is one of the basic data structures in Python that we always use. Whether you are a professional coder or just a beginner in Python, list is one of the most important topics in Python that you must cover. Thus, it is of utmost importance to know how to find the index of a list element. So without further delay, let us have a look at a list and then let's try to access the index of a particular element in that given list. Now let's say this is our given list and it consists of elements wherein the elements are the names of certain fruits. And now you want to find the element or the index of the element mango. So I will be helping you with numerous methods with which you can do this. Among these, the simplest way to get the index of a list element is to use the index method. To use the index method, you just have to pass the element as an argument. So let's have a quick look at the index method. Let's store mango in the variable x with the help of the index method. So all we have to do is use our list dot and then use the index method. Now within the index method, you just have to pass the element as an argument. So in this case, we want to find the index of mango. So what we have to do is simply pass in mango as an argument to the index method. And that's all. Now let's go ahead and print x and let's see what's the index of mango and there we go it says that the index of mango is 1 and indeed it is 1 so that's how simple the index method is now let's think of another scenario wherein the list contains duplicate elements let's say that this list has the element mango twice now what do you think would be the output of this code to answer this question you must remember that Index method is used to find the first or the lowest index of the element present in the list. That is in case of duplicate elements, it will return the first elements index in the list. For example, let's say in this list we have mango twice, but the first occurrence of mango is at the first index. So the output will be one once again in this case. So let's go ahead and check that. And there we go. The output is once again one. Now a simple workaround to this can be you can specify the start and stop index within the list in order to specify the range within which you want to find the elements index. So this means let's say you do not want to find the first index or the index of the first occurrence of the element mango. Hence what you can do is specify the start index wherein you can start from the index 2 and then you can specify the end index as well which is 4. Now in this case, you may or may not specify the last index. If you simply specify the start index, it will start counting from the second index and move on until the last element of the list. So let's see what happens when we execute this code now. And hopefully the answer will be 4. And yes, the index now returned to us is 4 because now we specified that we want to find the occurrence of mango in this list such that Python has to start searching for this element in the list starting from the second index. So mango appears at the fourth index and that was our output. Now there can be one more scenario wherein the element that you are searching for is not present in the list. Let's say we are trying to find the index of the element orange. Now let's execute our code and let's see what happens. And as you can see, we have an error in this case. Thus, this means that if the value that you are searching is not present in the list, the index method will throw a value error. If you want to dive deeper into the index method, then there's an amazing and wonderful tutorial on this, as well as a very descriptive blog tutorial, the link to both of which I'll provide in the description below. Please feel free to visit those links and master the index method in Python. But for this tutorial, it is going to be a very basic tutorial. And as far as the index method in regards to the list 
is concerned we have covered almost every scenario and i hope it helped you can now use the index method to find the index of any element in a given list now let's talk about another way of finding the index of an element in a list now it's another very simple way you can simply use a for loop to find the index of a given element and then store them again in another list so let's have a look at that with an example let's say we have an empty list by the name index now let's find the indexes of the element mango in our given list and then let's store those indexes in our variable or in our list index so let's use a for loop for that for i in range length of the list now what i am doing is i am simply iterating over all the elements in the list with the help of a for loop and for that i am using the range function wherein i am specifying that I will be iterating through a range of integers starting from 0 until the length of the list. So this means we will be iterating over all the indexes of the given list. Since the length of this list is 5, so our range function will iterate starting from 0 until 4. Now, if you are confused here, why 4? In that case, let me remind you that though the length of the list is 5, the last index is 4. That's why I said we will be iterating from 0 until 4. Now, let's move inside our for loop and let's check if the element that we want to search, which is mango, is equal to the current element of the list. And how are we going to do that? We can do that simply by using the square bracket notation. So we have to specify the list and then use the square bracket notation. And within it, we have to specify the counter, which is i. So this means one by one, every element will be compared to the element that we specified, which is mango. And if that match is found in that case, we simply have to store the index, which is given by i in our list index. Now we could have simply printed the value of i which depicts the index of mango. However, I purposely created an empty list wherein I can store the indexes of mango in the list and then print it. This will also give you an overview of another function that I will be using in order to add a value to an empty list. So the name of that method which helps you to add a value to an empty list is known as append. So all you have to do is to specify the name of the list wherein you want to add the value which is index in this case and then you have to use the function append. And within append you have to pass i as an argument because i is the value that you want to store in your list index such that i gives the index of mango. Now there is an advantage of using this method over the index method that we used previously, you can store all the indexes where the element mango occurs in the given list. So let's have a look at that and let's go ahead and simply print our list index wherein we stored all the indexes of mango. Now let's go ahead and execute our code. And there we go. As you can see, we now have extracted both the indexes where mango occurred in our original list which were 1 and 4 and that was the output that we got okay now let's discuss another way of finding the index of an element in a list now this is going to be very interesting because we will be using a loop as well as another method which will not only help you iterate over the list but also keep a count of every index in the list now this method that I am referring to is known as the enumerate method. The enumerate method is a built-in method in Python that counts the elements in a sequence. Now a sequence can be anything like a list, a string, etc. The enumerate function accepts an iterable object like a list as an input and then returns an object with a counter to each element. Now this counter will help us to keep track of the index of each element in the list. Now don't worry if you are confused I will help you out with an example and things will be clear. 
Now, once again, let us find the index of mango in our list. And now we are going to use the enumerate function within a loop. So we will be saying for, and now we need couple of variables. The first one is a counter, which will keep track of each index of every element in the list. And then we need another variable, which will track every element in the list. For example, if apple is the first element, then counter will store zero while element will store apple. Now this is also another effective way of iterating over a list. So let's go ahead with our for loop in and now we will be using our enumerate function and within the enumerate function you have to pass in the iterable over which you want to iterate and in this case the iterable is the list itself. So let's specify the name of the list and now let's move inside our for loop and once again we have to check if the given element or rather I would say you must have a look at the enumerate function or what the enumerate function does and then let's go ahead and find the index of mango in the list. So let's print counter along with the element. Let's provide a space in between in order to understand things better. Okay, now let's go ahead and execute the code. And as you can see, we not only have the elements, but also their indexes. And how did that happen? That happened because we used counter, which keeps track of the index of every element in the list. So now let's go ahead with our question, wherein we have to print the index of mango. So to do that, we need an if statement, which will check if the element mango is present in the list. In that case, we will be simply printing the index of that element or index of mango, which will be given by counter. Now let me repeat this again. We simply checked if mango is present in our list and how did we do that? We simply wrote if mango equals to the element. So in the second iteration, the element will store mango. If statement will have a successful match and then it will print the counter variable which stores the index of mango in the first case. And then again in the fourth iteration, the element will store mango while the counter will store the index of mango, which is now four. So four will be printed in the second case. So let's go ahead and execute our code to find out what happens. And there we go, exactly what we expected. So this is a very effective way of iterating over a list and finding the index of elements in the list. So with that, we come to the end of this lecture and I hope it helped you. Goodbye.